Hello, hello. We are slowly coming off our beginning stream and we're about to go live. Welcome to Chaotic Call Streaming. My name is Starwin. I run this little D&D &D session every Friday known as Open RP. If you want to join in on the open roleplay and uh, become a player in our uh, current campaign that we're running, uh, we are running a Nesperia type campaign similar to Mondays in the same world. And uh, yeah, there's a theme here that I will be happy to go over here because we do have one new player and we do have a couple of returning. It's going to be probably a shorter session than normal, but we're going to go back to Final Fantasy VII afterwards because I do have to scratch that itch. But I do want to keep keep this going alive, so definitely don't want to neglect doing this at all. So, I'll start by reintroducing the main plot of the story, which is... Uh, once upon a time, you guys have found yourself inside this ethereal world where there are undead, whether it be ghosts, spirits, or revenants, or skeletons. You were just trapped in this world between life and death, and the longer you were there, the more your memories just cease to be, till you eventually start to forget who you are, where you were from. Though, through some kind of guidance, perhaps, uh, some girl, some woman who might have helped you at one point, at least through what we found out from Nikon last week. Uh, she might have assisted you in a way that redeposit you into the mortal plane where you landed near where the wizard known as Felix lives. And Felix, being an arch wizard, realizing your plight, all you knew was your name and the gear that you have on you, you just vaguely knew how to use it. So that pretty much like reset you back to level one. It's been several weeks since you've been here and You've probably been on a few missions, and we've roleplayed those who were active at the time. But, you know, you probably met each other in, you know, casual greetings. But for the first time, maybe this group here finally meets and actually starts to, you know, interact with each other. And this is your ploy for today. Uh, we had a storyline we were going to run today, but I think it's just going to be a little bit of a town rundown. So, like, we're going to get to explore the... City of Dragonspine, since that's where we were last. Uh, we do have one player that is creating a character. And if you need any help, uh, this is what the first part of the show is about. We wait for you to kind of like get your character situated. I'll make you a token, make sure you find some art, stuff like that. And also invite people who are watching. If you haven't played D&D &D in a while and you're like, I would love to play. Yes, you can! Exclamation mark RP in Twitch chat exclamation mark discord will get you into the discord so you can talk in a voice chat exclamation mark rule to get a better understanding what kind of characters are allowed in the game uh, so basically just to be saying it out loud so everybody knows uh, if you are trying to create a character that is a you know a summoner like uh, what is it druid shepherd or a necromancer wizard whatever or a cleric please don't we have a lot of people here. You don't need to summon more people. We have plenty. It'll be fine. Well, today we don't have enough, but whenever we're on a good day, we definitely have a lot of people. Because normally, this we take about 10 to 15 players in at the beginning of a session, and then we just kind of like whittle out as the night goes by, and then we finally go into role play. But for now, we have a couple players who, here who will be able to start exploring the town. All right, uh, Marco, or Marco, Mark. If you can find some character art and add it to your character sheet, I'll, or did you already do that? Yep, I already uh, got a token ready. Nice, alright, cool. Well, you're easy to please. Let me get that token out here and I will edit it and then make it your main token. <laughs> alright, yep. So follow along if you want to be a DM that keeps stuff organized to an extent. Uh, I'm not going to worry about night stuff on these guys. We just need another HP and AC. Oh, by the way. You go. You know how to use Character Mancer to level up? Uh, yeah. All right. Use it to go to level five. Do it one at a time so that your Constitution modifier doesn't get screwed up in the level ups. Yeah, I, I ran into that problem the first week I started using World Twenty. Yeah. Uh, like you can't fault them. I mean, they did a really good job for the most oh, part. Yeah. But yeah, it's. Uh, so. When it comes to the rolling on health, uh, is it okay to take average if you roll below yes, average? Yes, you, you can take average if you don't want to roll. Gotcha. Uh, if you do roll and you get a 1, I'll allow you to re-roll. But yeah. Gotcha. Alright. So while he catches up, uh, 
If you are currently here, come hide out in this house. I'm going to start deleting tokens. We'll get rid of this one, like if your character's already on the table. Okay, that's your... Yeah, I know you're here. Uh, who is this? Krom? Uh, yes. Ah, uh, hey Krom. Can I ask a favor of you, friend? Uh, sure. Could you not have those uh, pictures show up because I think that might lag things out. I mean, we're already breaking this thing as it is. So if you could, oh. yeah, lower the pictures of your gifts, that'd be great. Thanks. Oh, okay. Don't get me wrong, I find them amusing, but when we had like 20 people here and everything on the inside of the game was breaking, I was like, that just can't be helping. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess I'll just do on the attacks then. Okay. I want to take away all your fun, but yeah, try not to overdo it if you would, please. Alright. All right. Um, yeah, so basically, I guess what we'll do now is just... Well, we're waiting for him to level up, which should take too long. It sounds like he's pretty familiar. If anybody out there in chat wants to join us, exclamation RP. And also, if you've already been a player and you want to just jump back into it, and your your character should should still be here. If for any reason you were in the game previously and you're no longer in the game, let me know. I probably had to kick you out because there were just too many numbers and I was trying to keep it from seeming intimidating to any new player who's like, 80 people? Do they really have 80 people playing at the same time? Who knows? Maybe they do. One day. We had up 15. We'll see how many more we can get. But uh yeah. Uh is there any question? So we'll have Krom and Tritier, and then, let's see here, and then Rain, okay, okay. I guess while we're waiting for Rain to get fully into character here, um, and also make sure you change your uh, display name here on this to your character name so we can kind of like relate it to who you actually are here. Make gotcha. things easy, appreciate it. But uh, yeah, Tridier and Krom, you you were actually together whenever we left last time, or no? I can't quite remember. Well, it's originally I was traveling with Robant and uh, and Pickle Pete, but Pickle Pete went off to do their own thing, and I was teaching Robant how to cut purses. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, okay, Robant's with you. <clears throat> um. I guess I'm exploring the town now. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me pull up some details here. What are what are you kind of like looking for, if you know? Anything you're looking for in particular, Chrome? Um, not, not really. Just whatever interesting pops out. Whatever interesting pops out. Those are dangerous words to say to a DM. You know that, right? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I'll make something interesting pop out. And you said pop out. So as you walk yeah. down the streets of this, this big old city, all of a sudden, two blue dragonborns, this little children's size, come racing by chasing each other. Then all of a sudden, they're like hiding behind you while the other's trying to tag the other one. And he's like, get back here! And the little girl version goes, no! Get away from me! And they're like playing around you roughly. What do you do with these annoying children that have cropped out of nowhere? Um, I guess I could play with the children. You're in the way! Move! I'm trying to get to her! No, stay in the way. I don't want him touching me. He's got cooties. Um, I asked them what's going on. We're playing tag, isn't it apparent, mister? Oh, okay. I guess in that case, I just stay out of the way. So you just slide out of the way, and then he, like, jumps at her, and then all of a sudden she starts darting down the alley. It's like, no, stay away, and then you see the two of them just kind of, like, race down the alleyway. Do anything else? Uh, I keep exploring. Make a perception check for me. Okay. Uh, no just this time, right? 
Huh? Oh, no gifs? Yeah, if you would, please. Like, they're funny, but let's lower that number. So, out of the corner of your eye, you realized as the boy goes to the end of the, of the street, he's looking left and right, and he goes, Julie? Julie? We're not playing hide go seek. Where are you at? And he seems walking the left direction trying to find the girl who just seemed to have disappeared as soon as he got to the end of the alley. Oh. Hmm. Well, I guess I guess I'll go help the boy look for Julie, I guess. So going like, down, the, yeah, you go down the alley and you catch up to him. Yeah, and, and I ask him, "Hey, little boy, um, I heard you're looking for that girl you're playing tag with, and you you don't seem to find her." No, she was. I, yeah, he's like stuttering. Is it she? She was. Oh, mom's gonna kill me, Julie, Julie. Well, how about this? I'll help you look for Julie. And hopefully we'll find her before nightfall. Oh, you think she's going to be gone till nightfall? Well, we'll see. We'll see, huh? <laughs> okay. Yeah, but don't worry. We're going to find her. We're, we will find her. Oh, okay, mister. Let me see what this boy's name is. Oh, God, that's too freaking... How do you even say that? No, no, re <laughs> How do you say Gorbundus? Like, this was the Gorbundus. name... Gorbundus! Yeah, 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 this was the name I rolled for. Gorbundus. What? No. Gorbundus. <laughs> Gorbundus. That's a great name. Yeah. Gorbundus. I am Gorbundus the Great. No, we're gonna call him... Oh, my God. I don't even know if this is a decent name, but I just yeah. rolled... Uh, we'll could, be, with... could be short name to Bundy. <laughs> Bundy. <laughs> that should have been my barbarian's name. Or Bundy. All right, we're going to go with Donar. Donar? Dinar. Kind of like Dinar. Okay, that's where that name came from. He must have rolled that. Dinar. Or Don. Don. Simply Don. Don. Yeah, so he probably goes by Don, right? So he goes... Yeah. So he turns to you and he's like, I'm Don. And that was Julie. And... Mom's gonna be angry if I don't find her. I say, well met, Don. Name's Chrome. And he kind of hears you say, well met, and he goes, warm wind, sir. Kind of like does a little hand gesture as if it was a polite greeting from his, from someone. Yeah, yeah, there. sure. I shake his hand, too. All right. Yeah. Well, like, and he's still baffled. He looks around. He's like, she was, she was just here. What? Uh, if you'd like. You can make an investigation or a perception check, or if you know a different way you want to approach this problem. I mean, I'll do perception. All right. Oh. Wow. Wow. All right. Let's see here. So the pair of you are like looking down this alleyway, and apparently you must have went the right way. As you reach the inn, you kind of see a carriage. It's kind of boxed. And it has only one opening, and it's in the back. Like, there's, like, a door of some sort with, like, bars on it. And right as you get to the edge, you see the doors closing as something small was thrown in. Probably the size of a girl. And this cloaked figure has, like, a green cloak around him, hooded, and there's, like, a pendant that, like, dangles off gently. With that 25, you notice a pendant that looks like it has, like, a hawk's talon on it. And then she, this figure, starts walking to the front of the carriage and gets aboard the seat and starts to mew the horses. What do you do? Um, hmm, let's see. Hmm, she's being kidnapped. I think if I yell out, they're just gonna run immediately. Yeah, and keep in mind, you're the one that noticed. Like, the boy is still looking. He didn't catch a thing. Yeah. I, I can find out if he actually did or not. Yeah, I don't think I want to get the boy in trouble unless he's a pretty good thief. Mm -hmm. I want to ask the boy how good he is at luck at, 
at being a thief, you know, like a street urchin, like um, picking locks <laughs> and sneaking and whatnot. Is he that kind of? Like, it's like all fantasy children are ragamuffins. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You never know. He might be a street urchin, right? Uh, yeah. I would say as you're having that conversation, maybe out of the corner of your eye, you realize that Robant and Trittier are, like, at the corner. And oh. yeah, you two want to be in that scene now, or Trittier, if you want to yeah, be nah. in that scene, you can engage them right. and bring them in. Like, like while this while this is happening, he's like you know, like he's re like reinstructing like you gotta cut it at this angle like this. Get the <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's like yeah yeah just like that. Okay. That way it just comes clean off, and they don't they don't feel the tug. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The two of them are having a conversation over there. You can definitely go interrupt them and ask. Like this lady is uh -oh. still like. Okay. So I go I go tell Don to keep an eye on that carriage for now, and then I go over to Roban and who's the goblin's name again? Uh, Triard. <laughs> Uh, I keep uh, him oh, Trudier. yeah. Yeah, I keep calling him Trudier. Oh, Trudier. Yeah. So I go over to Robot and Trudier. I run up to them right. and say, Guys, you gotta help me right now. There's a girl that's being kidnapped and taken to that carriage over there. You gotta help me free her right now. What? Are we needed? She kind of like, Yes. To Trudier and it's like, This is her <laughs> calling, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I guess it is. <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah, she pulls out what looks like a couple of thieves' tools. It's like, I'll do what I can. What do you need? You want me to pick the lock? Yeah, we, we need to break her up right now. Right now. All right, all right. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm going to see if I can find a carriage for us to... Um, all right, we'll just play it through the head space. So you lead her over there, and the woman or the driver seems to be distracted by somebody on the streets giving her commands. So there's like a few moments to actually get up there and do something. And then you can hear it faintly from behind the door because the bars in the air, you can definitely make muffling noises. Someone's in there. Are they okay? A uh, robot says as she approaches. Um, I'm hoping they're okay. But it looks like she's probably tied up, and yeah, we need to break. We need to break this open real fast before the driver notice. Okay, so she like quickly gets on the stairs, and you're kind of like blocking the path for now. Here we go, robot. What do you got for me? Ooh. She goes. I've been learning this from. Uh, oh God, I can't remember who was the person. I need to come back so I can remember. But the original person who was teaching her how to do this, and. She, she hears the lock click open, and she's like, oh, Pickle would be so happy for me. And then she pops the lock and removes it, and it's like, okay, there you go. And she kind of, like, steps out of the way so you can take over. Okay, um, all right, I am mainly hopping the carriage. What do I see? You see a bag with a big old tie on the top of it, and it's wiggling around violently. Okay. Um, let's see... Hmm. Off to the side. Yeah, while, try. while you're, while I mean, you're... I'm gonna ask Robon if it's okay if I could just grab the bag and then we get out of the carriage and then I open it once we're outside, or should I just like open the bag and then tell him what's going on, and then get the heck out of here? You should definitely grab it and run. Is what she says. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 she, yeah. Okay, I grab it and run. Yeah, as you're about to grab it, Trittier or Trider, you see the little boy that is the blue little dragonborn grab a couple pebbles and the the driver was about to drive off all of a sudden he chucks one at her <laughs> do you do anything like he's chucking rocks at the driver now and then you hear so him I say you stole my sister give her back and it's like hear, oh fuck <laughs> yeah yeah you're loud what the, what the hell kid? oh you son of a and she starts to get off the carriage at that time Chrome, you're able to pick up the bag, start leaving out behind the carriage, and then you can hear your friend Don tossing rocks. Uh, I want to include, uh, what's your character's name, the new person? Frey? Frey, yeah. Uh, I would say that you get teleported because, you know, Felix has the ability to teleport new players to the situation, so to speak. And I will go into that in deeper detail. But you're out, you're all allies, you're familiar with each other. This doesn't 
surprise you that it happens, but you appear possibly out of thin air, but you were ready to work today, and you realize everybody's in Dragon Spine, and then all of a sudden you show up with some nearby group members that you've seen on occasion. One of them is carrying a bag full of something that's trying to struggle, and then there's the little girl robot you've seen a couple times who's been helping cleaning up the house and tending it with Felix, and then you see a little boy off to the side with Trittier kind of like clutching his face like, oh dear, as the little boy is pelting some figure at the front of the carriage. Welcome to the scene. Feel free to interact as you all feel the need. <sighs> you know, I just wanted one day off. <laughs> nah, not in this scene, you ain't. <laughs> just cracking knuckles. Looks at the uh, the carriage that they're throwing, that the kids throwing rocks at. Mm -hmm. uh, do I see anybody riding it? Uh, at this moment, you see like a figure who just put the reins down. And she's like coming off the front end, and as you can see, it's a thin figure, uh, probably female. Doesn't look very masculine, but definitely shorter than a regular, you know, male. Uh, and she, she assumedly, steps off the ladder and comes down there. You little brat! And she seems to be picking up a bag that she has at her hip, and looks like she's about to throw it over the boy, just like she did the girl. I'm gonna just mosey on over and walk next to them mm -hmm. um, and just ro could I roll intimidation you tell me how you're doing this um, it's more or less I'm standing there in her blind spot where the sun is and casting my shadow and kind of just tapping on the shoulder lightly I will right, say this is and her uh, my character is in full armor all the time. The one thing about him is that he never takes his helmet off, and he's able to situate his helmet to where the shadow of it, it's very hard to see within the helmet. So it's kind of like you're just staring at something that doesn't have a face, essentially. All right, so here's what we're looking at as far as scene setup. You appear down here at the south end, okay? Mm -hmm. And she is coming off the horse carriage over here, and this X will represent the boy for now. And she's just about ready to grab this boy. The boy starts to throw another rock at her and he's starting to book it but he's, you know, it's still within that six second period and you want to like go up there and do something so feel free to move your token where you want to stand and then explain how you want to intimidate her. Like do you say something or are you just hoping the light does enough for you? Um, the light along with just me putting my heavy hand on that person's shoulder and as it, once they notice I'm just gonna, um, I would attempt to say, you know, you should focus more on the situation besides a child. And what was the child saying something about you doing something again? Roll an intimidation. Stares at you, kind of like shoves your hand off her shoulder. I ain't got time for some political nonsense from someone like you. Go back to your church and relearn your own scriptures and mind your own business. But she does stop what she's doing, realizing there's witnesses and jumps back on top of the wagon. I ain't got time for this. Is there uh, any specific like symbols or anything like that on the wagon? Any writing? No, it looks or pretty even plain or beat up. Uh, only thing that you recognize on her is a pendant that has a talon, uh, emblem of a talon, like a hawk's talon. Gotcha. And then she jumps back on the wagon, unless anybody does anything further, she starts to mosey on. Chrome or Trittier? It's, uh, tr it's like, Trid will actually be, like, closely watching, like, approximately how the uh like how the like certain details about the carriage itself and the direction it's going mm -hmm. that's right you better run throws another rock you damn kid go away and she drives off and she drives off northward yeah i'm, um... I'm gonna ask the kid for a rock here mister you scared her off good I'm yeah. gonna throw the rock at the carriage. Um, I guess um, Chrome will open the bag and untie the little girl and yeah. then bring her to Dawn. Yeah, so you pull out Julia, Julie, 
and yeah. she goes, uh, uh, um, what, what happened? It was so, and, ah, did you, where are you taking me? And Robot's like, no, 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 he saved you, he didn't take you. What do you do? Well, I know what you said oh. you were going to do, so you go and take her out of the bag all the way. And then yeah. she's like, oh, well, thank you. Set her down, and then walk her over to Don. And Don's like, Julie! And he goes over, and then all of a sudden, he tags her. There, now we're even. You're it. <laughs> and she's like, hey, that's not fair. I was taken away, damn it. I know. And I threw rocks at the lady that did it, too. They helped. And they both... Are, uh, are a lot of kids just disappearing recently? <laughs> I... We don't know. I mean, we're... We... I did, we don't know what that was. Robot just kind of like stays close to you to try. Hmm. Have you guys ever seen this kind of wagon before? And the wagon itself, and this is just for your knowledge, it looked like any other wagon, like a very old beat up wagon. It was nondescript, almost like it was purposely used for that purpose to not have any identifiers. Mm. So yeah, they tell you no. I mean, I mean, I've seen several wagons like it, but it's never used for that. Sometimes even guards have wagons like that, and they throw prisoners back there. I seen them. Mm. I'm gonna be one when I grow up. I'm gonna be just like dad. Oh, mm. is your dad a is your dad a guard? He was. I don't know. I haven't seen him in a while. Oh, yeah. The two of them mm. kind of both look down. Um, and then Don just pipes, well, we need to get home, Julie, come. And they look at you one last time and says, well, kind of like leaving an open invitation, like if you wanted to follow, or you can just let them go on on their own. Uh, mm. silently follow, that way you can yeah. tell the, uh, the adults of the household what had happened. Yeah, I mean, I I'll offer to escort them, you know, keep them safe until they get home. Uh, anybody want to roll me a D100? I need to find out what this other NPC's name's going to be. Sure. And then... Let me get to my lovely roll tables. Got you with a solid 91. 91? I like 91. Let's see what we get. We get... Ooh, that's actually a nice dragonborn name. It is Tatian. Almost like Tatiana. So she's probably short name for Tatty. And so the children kind of like lead the way. And I don't know, did you guys say you were just kind of like shadowing them? Or did you want to make your presence known as they are going home? Like, do you want them to know you're, you're following? Oh, yeah, I would, I would follow. I would be walking right next to them. I wouldn't say anything. Yeah. I would just nod at the kids and just give a thumbs up while next to them kind of thing yeah i'll, I'll do the same i follow with them walking set walking with them yeah all right excellent yeah and robot is back there with try just kind of like shadowing but you know like you guys are making your presence known so they're just making sure nothing creeps up on or she is anyway she thinks she's playing the you know the the heel who's like keeping an eye out for things coming up from behind and just staying close to trittier uh, and he's eating out a meat stick that he didn't finish earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, we had a visit to the marketplace. Uh, yeah, and practicing our cut person. So he, the kids take you down several streets, and then eventually they take you to a decently sized house. Looks like, like it's not a noble's house, but it definitely looks like somebody who's coming to some money. And their front yard has like a beautiful gardenscape, like it's been tended. Like there might even be people who come here to tend on this beauty of you know, beauty of work, like, almost very noble-ish, but it's in a part of town that's not quite up to that standard. However, they go up to the door, and then this uh, blue dragonborn kind of, like, steps out and goes, Jules, where have you and your brother been? And, uh, well, we've been right here, Mom. Uh-huh. Don? Oh, Mom, sorry, we went to play in the streets again. 
God, what did I tell you, kids? It's not safe right now. Get... Oh, great. Look what you brought. Which... I am so sorry if my kids caused you... And she starts apologizing to you automatically, thinking that the kids did something wrong to you. Oh, no, it's if, okay. It's if there's anything fault. you need, let me know. I will make this right. I promise. No, it's, uh, it's, it's okay. It's not the for us, you know? Um, hey, I didn't we're just... do anything wrong this time. Dang. I, I would just ask that you keep a better eye on them. Uh, there's a situation. One of the wagons tried taking the girl. Her eyes narrow and she goes, what? And she turns to her kids. Is this true? And the little girl, Julie's like, yeah. And she goes, well, good thing these fine strangers found you when they did. Bless your hearts, dears. Bless you both. Bless you all. Are you sure I can't reward you for this kind deed? Just take it a little easy on the kids if you can. They're kids. That's it could have been worse, but they're bad. Is... <laughs> Has this been a problem? Oh, uh, not... For me, she says, almost shakingly now. There's been word that there's a cult or a group of people who are trying to do some weird things. And, you know, we've just been told to keep... Had an eye on you kids. I don't know how you got out the gate. The gate was closed. And the little girl just eats behind her brother. <laughs> Uh, get inside, you two. Wash up. I'm going to have supper on the table before long. Would you all care to join? Um, sure. I don't yeah. see why not. Yeah. Good. Come in and uh, watch your feet. And, you know, you walk into this well-decorated house. Uh, assuming everybody goes in, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this house is, like, really decorated. There's vases out with fresh flowers uh, almost three feet as soon as you enter there's a like a marble table that's underneath it and a desk there uh, there's a velvet red couch in like the living space with a couple red armchairs with the same velvet coloration uh, and you know like the the wood borders are like in a gold inlaid so it looks very you know uh, it's expensive looking spacious I guess but yeah you could definitely tell there's a lot of money in this house and she kind of like escorts you into the living space and says please have a seat I'll have uh, I have one of our servants uh, serve up some tea if you if you like oh thank you uh, I'll sit down Rosie and this female woman comes out dressed in like a maid outfit yes ma'am uh, human brown hair brown eyes just your average brown eyed girl and she goes uh fix some tea for us please right away ma'am turns around and goes to the back to start pouring and cooking what you assume would be the kitchen and she sits down and she says all right go up go and wash up you two and sends the kids off to wherever they're at robot sits casually next to trittier and the rest of you take a seat either at the couch or an open armchair. And she takes another open armchair and just facing this lavish fireplace as well. And there's like a big old painting with uh, the two dragonborns. One is her. And then there's two younger dragonborns that you can see that represent the kids. And then there's a like an older male version that's just like in the picture. And she kind of like looks up to the portrait and just sighs softly to herself. And then re-acknowledges you. So, uh, tell me what happened. Uh, well, there was, I think it was a lady that's trying to kidnap your Julie. Well, they were playing tag in the streets. Yeah, and the streets. then, so, yep, in the streets. And I think somehow Julie sort of mysteriously disappeared. Well, and I came across your son. And I think he was telling me about how he's trying to find his sister. And so I offered to go help look for your daughter. And we did. And then that's where we came across this, um, there's this wagon and there's this lady who, who kidnapped your daughter and tossed her in the, in the bag in her wagon. And we, and then we, we, all of us, um, 
we uh, we uh, managed to rescue her just in the mm-hmm, nick of time. Mm-hmm. And you could visibly see anger building in her eyes, not towards you, but you know, just towards the conversation and realizing that her kids were at fault here. Uh, yes, Frey, I would say you would have noticed that as well. You had a close-up encounter with her. Yeah. Uh, all right, but yeah, you could visibly see her getting angry about it, and she just goes, oh, no, I am very grateful that you taken care of it and that you brought my children back alive and well. Uh, you have my gratitude. Rosie, is that tea done? And the lady hustles out of the kitchen with a big old silver platter with tea and several cups, hands you all a cup, starts pouring tea for each of you. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, right away, ma'am, you know. And she goes, thank you, Rosie, now leave. Right away, yeah, ma'am. But, um, it's not their fault, you know. They're they're just kids. I mean, yeah. No, I totally understand, and it's hard to keep an eye on them sometimes. Kids will be kids, as you say. Yeah. Oh, these are some dangerous times, especially since he's not here. Starts to sip for tea. Um, who's not here? Uh, she points to the portrait up above, and Trittier, I think you, Trittier and uh, Crom would actually recognize this picture, because you saw this guy. If I, Way. Correct me if I'm wrong, hey. but this is Nikon. You've met Nikon, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it didn't make hey. sense because he looked a little bit younger, perhaps, in his portrait, but you put the pieces together. That's Nikon. It's oh, his, hey, yeah, that's Nikon. Oh, are you his wife? Wait, you know where Nikon is? Um, sort of. He's kinda? been missing for four years. Do you know where he is? Well, actually, he's in town right now. Yeah, what? he's in town. Yeah, it's a she bit of a long story. She drops the cup, it crashes on the ground, and then we see Rosie pop out of the back room. Ma'am, are you okay? He's alive. He's alive? And she's looking at yeah. you now with desperate eyes, like, prove this to me. I must yeah. know. I must know. Um, well, let's see. Do I have any proof other than words? Um, <laughs> at the moment, you knew that Nikon and Dravos originally had a meeting at the back of one of the uh, guard outpost well, offices. Yeah, I mean, all I could say was that, yeah, we were chilling at their place one night until, like, him and some pale lady were run- running away from the undead. Uh, we say no. Who's this pal lady? I will not hear of any woman around my man. <laughs> I don't know. It's just some pal lady who was with him for some days, but. What? Look. <laughs> your voice. <laughs> no, 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 no. I can assure you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's nothing more than a friendship. <laughs> All of a sudden, we hear the Point. door open. But go ahead. I'll, I'll save this scene for a second. Oh, yeah. I was just adding to the where yeah. uh, I'm just pouring the uh, tea through my helmet, just yeah. thinking this. Is, this is yeah, so I guess we're literally spilling the tea now. Yeah, and as you guys are having this conversation, she's freaking out. We see the door open, and there, after all these years, Nikon finally steps back into his house, and he just mutters, "I'm home," and she rushes up to him and slaps him in the face. And then she gives him a big hug. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you know, I get it. I probably deserve that. I've been gone a while, and I know we haven't had a... Yeah, I remember this now. And he just hugs her back. Like, he's been having a lot of luck getting memories, so I would say this is one of those memories he gets back. He finally remembers where he lives. And after he finished his meeting with Dravos, Dravos probably retreated to a tavern to deal with his worries. But he realized he had a family, and he came home, and he's like, I'm sorry I haven't made it home sooner, dear. Um, I've been uh, way late, as it were. I mean, after the cultists, they sent me on another mission, and, well, we know how that turned out. You've been gone for four years, you son of a bitch. Do you realize what you put me through? And she just starts wailing and starts crying into his shoulders, and he's like, there, there, I know, I know. And then we hear Man, a lot he's of, had a really active day. <laughs> You're telling me, friend. 
And then we hear footsteps pattering from the top of the stairs that is nearby, and the kids pop up. <gasps> Dad! And they all race over, and then we see the happy family reunited, and he goes, Oh, Don, Julie, glad to see that you two are okay. And, yeah, they're just having a good, quick moment where they're rejoined for now. And then after she has a moment, she goes, All right. Who the hell is this pale-faced girl? I want to know. And he stares at her for a minute like, What? What are you talking about? Oh, you know, you've been hanging out with some pale-faced girl right before you showed up. Wait, you're... No, that that was a specter or something. Somebody... Okay, sit down. I'll tell you the story. And she goes, Oh, you better tell me the story. <laughs> and he goes to an armchair. The wife sits down, the children kind of like cuddle up next to um, their mother and Robot's right there at the edge with Trittier and the rest of you kind of like sitting comfortably with tea. Uh, Rosie just finished uh, scraping up the last of the glass and I'll get some more glasses, ma'am. And she walks back to, back to the back. Anyway, um, yeah, I've been gone a while. I apologize. I was on a mission. You, you know how those are. I mean... My missions pay for what you got here in this lovely house, and it makes sure you guys have a roof. And uh, I've been gone quite a long time. I've checked in with my superiors recently, as I've... Well, these fine people here, pointing towards, like, Trittier and the rest of you from the group. Uh, they found me up in north, uh, or wherever Felix lives. Uh, uh, you know Felix? She's shaking her head. Oh, who's Felix? Is he somebody who... Hooked you up with this pale-faced girl? No, dear, calm down. There's no pale-faced girl that I'm interested in. Just you, dear. And he kind of like coaxed her cheeks. And he's like, okay, I get it. I got to win her over. Kind of look in his eyes. He's like, looking at you guys for like pity. He's like, man, what I go through, right? But, um... Yes, um, been gone for four years. My apologies, dear. Four to five, something like that. And... It was by some grace of a pale-faced woman who I am not interested in who led me to find a way out. Uh, I met up with these young gentlemen and lady and they helped free me from the bonds of the ethereal bleed. It's something I was investigating. It's dangerous and I promise you I probably won't be doing anything like that again. And <laughs> continues to tell the story in greater detail and for you who are new you know the ethereal bleed is exactly the same place you came from he went through the same situation however yeah he's been gone for some time but he's been having a lot better luck getting his memory back than most of you so far uh some of you have been actually triggering memories and some of you you know this is a new life whatever the old life was doesn't matter what i make of it now is probably what it is uh, you know, ideals like that. I mean, you can each come up with your own excuses and how you feel about it, but in the end, you're still exploring the options of trying to find those lost memories. But um, Nikon says, well, my agent days are over, and I'm going to be staying at home for a while. Oh, are we all having dinner together then? Uh, what brings you all over here anyway? How did you find my house? I mean, this is a coincidence indeed, I think. Yeah. Oh, I told Nikon that his kids were about to be kidnapped, and we saved them from the kidnappers. <laughs> and we would actually like to know more if you know about this kind of thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got kind of shape in the air, uh, and the, the shape of a town. Like, do you know of the, uh, the cult that likes to deal with that? this whole uh, situation yeah he uh like you share that information it's like shape of a hawk's pendant you say yeah, yeah, yeah something like that nah look i don't know what new powers be but if i find anybody like that he just kind of like clutches his knuckles if i find anybody like that trying to steal my kids That he just kind of uh, like, seemed to be heading north, but you know, didn't really follow it after the fact. Can't exactly leave almost kidnapped children in the street. Yeah, and I think it'll be it's not safe to you know leave those kids alone, so we decided to escort them to their house. 
I didn't know these are your kids, though. The blue scales didn't give it away. <laughs> Either way, my thanks. You all deserve something. Uh, dear, do we have anything besides food that we can give them? They... And she's like, I've been trying to ask them if I can give them anything. You know what? I'll take care of this time. And she walks away and goes upstairs. And he's like, just... You deserve a reward, regardless. So, for that, you have my things. And you said these people were going north. Yeah, somewhere in the direction of north. The only thing north of here are the mountain range. They're heading to the mountains. They might have a hideout somewhere within. Hmm. Yeah, oh, Definitely a lot of places to hide up there, I suppose. Yeah, it is a good place to hide. There is a group of your kind kind of point to trade here that you know they, they do evil deeds uh that are hiding up there too so it doesn't surprise me that other villainous people would find a way to hide in the cold cold air of the mountains to keep people like us away so to speak oh yeah i'm fully aware that we're evil motherfuckers <laughs> yes and you seem to be a refined evil motherfucker and you have my uh respect You know, I just do what I want to do. You work with Felix, so you get a pass. <laughs> Robot's <laughs> over there looking at this. Like, there's, she's confused. She's like, "Are you, are you two fighting, or are you just talk?" I'm. You all right, Try? Oh no, it's it's very it's very easy to confuse that. I it always sounds like I'm shouting. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Try is pretty good. He's teaching me things. Oh, what is he teaching you? How to cut so extracurricular <laughs> activities. Yeah, yeah, how to cut rope. And she just kind of like innocently shuts up. They, oh, not too much. Well, that's a good trait to learn in case you need to cut the rope of a boat or something, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right, she says. Yeah, anyway. plenty of uses. Or to cut yourself out when you've been kidnapped. Mm. <laughs> Hey, I want to learn, the little girl Julia says. That would be handy. And the robot's like, oh, well, I don't want to play with, uh, you know, knives if it's not okay with your family. Like, I need to make sure your mom and dad's okay with you playing with knives. And the boy pipes, oh, we're going to play with knives? Mom, can I please? Oh, wait, where'd she go? Dad, can I play with knives? <laughs> no, 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 no. The pair of you? <laughs> no knives, please, no knives. Oh, it's okay. Well, uh, I'll tell you how to do it later then. Oh, okay. Look forward to it. You know, they're showing excitement. Maybe they're starting to chat. Little hush voices and stuff. Ah, okay, Pickle Pete. You're here with us. And, uh, yeah, you may go ahead and do that. So, make your stealth check. Because I want Robot to make a perception. <laughs> Just, like, smoothing over the fact that he's teaching her about thievery. <laughs> Yeah, in yeah, front so of we're... a guardsman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. She's not trained in that. So, be the 15 on your stealthy. <laughs> so, we see Pickle Pete trying to slip in innocently. At least Robot does. And Chrome. And they, she points, Aha! You're back, Pickle Pete! And she leaps towards Pickle Pete and just kind of like catches you and like, Welcome back! Welcome back! Ah, little pickle. Welcome back, pickle Pete. Ah, yes, that was the kinku that was with us. Nikon noticing. Yeah. Um, well, that's great. Yep, to be... I... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna ask pickle Pete how they've been. Pickle's been busy. Pickle's been busy. Mm, my been bad. Teaching me stuff. What me how to... Yeah, he showed me how to cut rope. Rope bat? Mm-hmm. No, yeah, rope is... Um, she looks at Nikon and then tries to whisper, He taught me how to cut purses. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I tell Pickle Pete that it turns out our Nikon here has a family. He has a family here. Yeah, Blue yeah. Pickle has a lot of family? 
Well, my wife and my two kids here, you and you see the two kids before you. This is uh, Julie. Hello. And then so there is a Don. Hey. Yeah, they were... Oh, it's little blue pickles. Yeah, yeah, little blue pickles. Uh, and, of course, as we see down the stairs, this woman, female dragonborn, same color tone, just come down. Oh, more guests. Oh. And this here is my wife. And I've already forgot her name. <laughs> Tat <laughs> I'll just call Tat her Pretty Pickle. Yeah, wow. I think her name is Taddy. Taddy, Taddy now. Yeah. yeah, you're being such a good husband. I know. Already forgetting your oh, wife's well, name. No, 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 no. What it is is like, oh, it's the ethereal plea. Don't, don't tell her that I don't remember her name. <laughs> it is Tatian. Tatian. That's the name. Oh, that yeah. Her. Tat and there we go. So she goes, and this is Taddy. And Taddy goes, oh, well, yes, here. I've brought down some gold, and I hope this will suffice for helping our children. So those who were involved in the previous scene, you can add 50 gold pieces to your coin purse. Definitely help somebody who just joined. All right, 50. Mm -hmm. I uh, stick one of the gold pieces in the slots of my helmet and just try to bend it that way. Yeah. Put it in my bag. <laughs> yeah, it's real gold. And uh, she says, that's my thanks to you. And Robot's like, ooh, 50 gold pieces. What do I do with this? It's the very least we can do. Alright. Just editing Robot's. Oh, got like, a lot of stuff. We gotta find you a sweet shop or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or a dagger shop. Ooh, could always use more daggers. And Nikon's over there. Yeah, so you let that little girl play with knives? What's up with that? I mean... Oh, and Julia's like piping up. She's the one that helped rescue me. I heard her rattling the locks outside my cage. Oh, well then. Thank you, you little girl. And she pipes up proudly. I'm gonna be a rogue when I grow up. And everybody... <laughs> he laughs. He's like, well, I'm not sure that's a... Perhaps a locksmith, perhaps? Uh, but yeah, he just kind of like chuckles at that. The missus kind of like sits on the armchair next to Nikon and gives him a hug from the back. Just kind of like leans on him. And the kids are just over there talking with Robot, just like, How do you cut that purse again? Like, what's the angle? Oh, we gotta go up at a, like a 45, I was told, and just make sure they don't feel it leak. <laughs> and Nikon's hearing parts of it, he's like, what's this about a purse? So uh, like, yeah, you know, just teaching survival skills. <laughs> and Robot goes, shh. <laughs> oh, sorry. And um, Rosie comes out of the kitchen. Uh, ma'am. Supper's ready if everybody would like to eat. And Nikon looks at her. Who the hell is that? Oh, she's a new servant who's been helping me out with the kids while you've been gone. Come on, let's let's eat. It's been ages since we had some food together. And then they all walk into the kitchen. And uh, you're welcome to join them. Or the dining area. And, um, yeah. As Oops. I've as I joined to walk in, um, could I, like, glance at Rosie to see if she has any sort of of that similar cult symbol on her? Oh, that's a pretty good idea. I'll uh, make, a, make a perception. Straight roll, boys. Mm-hmm. Nice. Hmm, let me see. What can I get before 19? She's dressed out in a maid outfit, and... Uh, but it's say like maybe her body language seems a little off for being a maid, but other than that, any indication that she might belong to a cult would be unable to be read completely. Like she doesn't have a visible pendant or anything. It's almost like, let's say like your intuition, if you were to say, okay, if I'm right, she would be stupid to carry something like that on her. So you're, you're right to have the suspicion, but as far as seeing any iconography on her, yeah, she's she must be really good at this if if she's part of a cult. Um, I'll go ahead like 
put the, my hand on her shoulder and just ask, would you like assistance? Oh, please. She kind of like startles for a moment, not realizing somebody was willing to help. Um, and yeah, she has you go into the kitchen with her where there's several different dishes, like a giant turkey has been cooked. There's biscuits and gravy and like brown gravy. And there's also like big old mounds of mashed potatoes that were going to be served similar to like a Thanksgiving dinner almost. And she, she, she kind of like chimes up, well, kind of good to see Nikon back. Uh, or, and she like picks that up and walks it out to the, uh, kitchen and you can pick up a dish if you want and bring it out. Yeah, I'll help. Um, putting the dish down, I'll kind of like attempt to whisper to Nikon. Did you know who that maid was at all in the past? Any recollection? Yeah, he whispers back. It's been four to five years. I probably don't know many people anymore. Hmm. I will get to know her though. Maybe it's just mm. my intuition messing with me. All right. Yeah. And then he kind of like turns away from you and starts laughing about something and tries to make it look natural that he wasn't having a private conversation. And uh, yeah, the rest of you are seated at this big mahogany table that's been decked out with fine silk tabletops and uh, placemats for food. And you see a fork and a spoon and a knife, you know, like a traditional mannerism type etiquette. And, uh, Nikon kind of sits at the head. The rest of you kind of like take a seat at the side with the missus closest to him and the children, you know, shortly away from that. And there's like room for 10 people on each side. And then it's a very long table. And of course, the food is set at the middle and then served out. And Nikon lifts up a glass up. There's wine poured out if anybody wants wine. Otherwise, you can have more tea or anything that you would like to drink. So Rosie goes around. Is there anything I can get for you to drink? one tea tea for you okay and yeah what about you um, goes oh i like tea tea robot goes can i have wine <laughs> and rosie looks at her you shouldn't have wine is it okay if she has wine staring at somebody with more authority over her hopefully i mean i had wine when i was seven See, it's, it's gotta be legal. <laughs> so goblin. Yeah, yeah. So she's good no be drunk pickle. Oh, <laughs> you heard her? No, or him, or whoever. You heard the bird. And I'll bring you ah! some tea out here. <laughs> I'll bring you some tea out here. Pats her on her red hair. Okay, fine. And then yeah, Rosie finishes asking what they want. Did you want uh, wine as well, Trity, or did you want tea? Now just keep it, keep that one coming. Okay, yeah. You, so everybody gets what they want, and then yeah, you all have like a big old turkey dinner with sweet ham or sweet yams and you know the potatoes, gravies, and stuff to your liking as you want. And you all kind of like fall into a hush for a moment as you eat, and then night time like pipes up. Well, this this really brings me back. Like we usually have noble guests over all the time when we were just coming up in the world and then when I got reassigned to the uh, organization things started happening especially with the promotions and now I get to retire because of uh, you know the lack of the years and the service I put in beforehand kind of like raises his glass of wine uh, toast to another life I suppose um, I raise as well it's like here here here, here. Same. Live at that. Pickle agrees. Mimics all the voices of everybody. <laughs> and I kind of go, that would be a handy skill to have. And takes a drink. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoy your meal. Stay as long as you want. And if you need to, you can stay the night. Is that fine, dear? Or do we have rooms anymore? If they need a place. But you said they were with Felix, did you not? Oh, that's right. They probably got want to get back home soon anyway, right? But about this time, it's probably like 5 in the evening. Maybe 5.30 by the time the dinner is done. And if there's any conversations you like to have during this dinner, then by all means, ask your questions or whatever you want to talk about. Mm-hmm. 
Uh -huh. Es... Like, actually, even think... like maybe even like after the dinner, just like 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 even try like kind of, like goes up to the other kids like, hey, next time that someone tries to like you know grab you whatever, just like aim right about here with a sick punch. <laughs> I don't think that would have worked on her. Not as effective. You as... pickle to show you how to really punch. Ooh, that's... <laughs> so the <laughs> Nikon's over there. Oh wait a minute. Uh, what are you trying to teach my children? And then. The kids are quickly showing interest. Yeah, what do we do? <laughs> you lift all your fingers up, curl them into a ball, like this? and then before any, and before anyone knows, and then I immediately punch to the ear. <laughs> <laughs> Make an attack roll. And I'll leave it up to Trittier if uh, if it's too low, that if it hits or not. Does that hit you? That's too low to hit. <laughs> do you want it to say like it impacts you but do no damage or do you want to dodge it? Um he'll like he'll like just like slightly like uh he'll like slightly maneuver his body a bit so that it actually goes in the right place. <laughs> uh, so you Oh, like, how kind of you. <laughs> so you like pull back and like there's a fist in front of me. <laughs> so it's almost like she held her punch from hitting you or something. Yeah, but, yeah, more just like like making it still illustrative, but also maybe not uh, embarrassing Pickle Pete. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trying to like demonstrate. I didn't punch that bad. <laughs> and we see Don start trying to punch his sister, and she's like, "Quit that, Dad, Mom, Don, quit trying to hit your sister." Uh, P Pete, thank you, thank you so much for the kind lessons. It looks like they're going to be learning a different one shortly. Don to your room. Oh, um, some things never change. <laughs> go ahead. After the after the kids go away, I'm going to uh, just walk up to the wife and ask the same question about well, a similar question about the uh, the maid when the maid isn't around. Like how like when did she first start kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. We'll say like the maid went to go get some more wine for Trittier, who is just pouring down through it, and. You get your moment, and yeah, how do you want to ask it? Uh, I'm just wondering, when did the maid start working for you? It seemed, it sounded as if she uh, was around after your husband had left. Well, whenever Nikon was found missing, and I was left wanting for help, I put out an ad. And uh, yes, Rosie was one of the first people who answered, and she actually does a very well job. She's been... She's been with us for about three years now. Have you confided in her quite a bit about how you missed your husband? Well, we've had conversations, but I do try to keep it professional. But sometimes she does lend an ear, and I do thank her for that. Mm. Well, thank you for your time. No, no, thank you. Sure. Thank you again for taking care of my kids. I am so happy that they did not get abducted. That would have been terrible. Would have ruined this lovely reunion that you've all provided. And I am so grateful at the bottom of my heart that Nutcon was able to come back from this. And she's kind of like choking up back and forth. Like, you know, like the tears of missing yeah. him so much start to overwhelm her. It's indeed touching. Um,. I walk away, and as I'm passing Nikon, I just tell him, I did hear Rosie say, it's good to have you back, but it doesn't seem like she was around when you were. Maybe she just listened to the woes of your wife. Maybe That's just probably likely. I mean, who else would you go and talk to if... Uh... Nobody's there to actually be. Wouldn't put it past her if she shared something about us. I mean, after all, this is my house. She would at least want to tell her that that much. But, yes. Uh, I'll, I'm going to keep an eye on that girl. Don't you worry. Appreciate it. I might be retired, but I am no old fool. Not anymore. That's good. You have a good day. Mm-hmm. With I'll that, just wait outside. 
Yeah, at this point here, the meal kind of like finishes, unless you guys have any last minute things you want to do before leaving the residence. Alright, with that, you are all escorted out to the gates. Nikon comes out with and shakes everybody's hand in kind and says, thank you again, thank you again. I can't say how much help you've been, and if you need this Dragonborn in his old glory to come to your aid at any time, well, you now know where to find me. And with that, I'll go ahead if anybody had anything to say back. I just nod and continue the exit. Pickle happy for you. I I am happy to. Thank you, you know, finding me when you did. And uh, I really wish one of you would not have told her about the pale face girl. I am going to hear about that for a week now. I chuckle. Yeah. And he kind of like chuckles with you. Gives everybody that shake again and looks to Robot. And you, stay out of trouble, Missy. I don't want to have to come hunting you down. You know what I mean? She smirks at him. You won't have to worry. And if we try to write, you'll never even catch her. <laughs> That's exactly where she was going to whisper out loud as she walks away. Because you'll have to catch me first. <laughs> and you guys start traveling out. And at this point, you can either go back to the tavern, explore the town to your own desires, or maybe we can find out something else in a different direction altogether. You have but to discuss where you want to go, what you want to do, or if you have an ideal that you want to try to work on so if everybody has an intent of what they want to do after leaving you can share that and we'll see if we can facilitate that in some way I will turn around to the group and just say well uh, I'm normally used to doing solo jobs that's why I'm not too familiar with most of you but um, I'm gonna try and get some more information on that whole cult aspect this place is a little it still feels new to me will help I will help as well appreciate it well you're each more than welcome to uh, join me just you know don't fall too far behind on the sticks why would pickle fall behind its sticks maybe you tripped oh I thought it was place No. All right. So everybody gathers their thoughts. They're going to go searching for something. What is your intent to lead the group to then in this case, uh, Frey? Um, just going to like taverns or like locations that would have adventurers or people that would know about the mountains. All right. That's actually a good idea. Uh, how about I ask for an investigation check? You may have advantage with everybody helping. And uh, gotcha. I'll see if I can find a place that might throw some interest here. Ooh, I actually got some ideas. All right, cool. Ideas are set. So everybody Ooh. rolls. Uh, no, we'll just have him roll with advantage. That'll there work. you go. 14. 14 gives you. So there are, like, this basically opened up how many places you have to look. Pickle, you know of one place that's off the map, so to speak. But that'll be an option that's, that's up to you to discuss or do on your own. But there is the inn called the Dragon Claw Inn that you can visit. There is the tavern, the Hellstone Tavern. And then there's a hunting lodge in this city where some exotic game hunters seem to hang out. So if any of those three seem to strike a fancy. Um, just like, I, I would almost think that uh, at least Triard would probably like. I don't know. I think, like, the hunting lodge might be the best bet. They are probably outside the town a lot more other people are. I'm agreed. I had a similar thought. Alright, so to the piercing eye, this is a hunting lodge for exotic game hunters. Uh, let me just double check my notes so I know who's in this place at this point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, so as you find your way with this investigation you're able to you know you're first checking out the locations this one gets towed to you and you find your way to the piercing eye you see a big old sign that says the piercing eye and there's like this big old eye that with like an arrow target through the middle of the iris 
And uh, as you walk in, you can see all kinds of heads and trophies on the walls. We're talking like a dire bed, uh, a dire bear head. I could say words. Give me a second. There's like rhino heads hanging off one wall, a lion, a tiger, and there's like stuffed hyenas. And then you happen to see a bullet head and what looks like a cut up version of a hydra head that's just hanging off one of the other walls by itself. Um, and then you hear a uh, orc out of his uh, seat say, Aye, what you all doing coming up in here like that? You looking for trouble? Looking for information so that we can take care of the trouble in the mountains. You Ooh. hunt game, we hunt cultists. Yeah. You want to help? Well, you I hunt big cult? game anyway, but... <laughs> <laughs> huh. He doesn't see What is hunting? What is... What, what the hell did you even enter this lodge for? Fine, I'll show you. Look around, look around. These are our trophies. See that dire bear up on the wall? <laughs> I did that. See that hydra head? I was part of the team that took it down. <laughs> well, if you need to know, we, we are a hunting lodge that hunts exotic game. Next up on our trip, we're hoping to go into the jungle and find some elephants. Maybe some lions and tigers. Who knows? But we plan on hunting the best. Maybe even a unicorn. <laughs> I'm going to find that unicorn. That's probably not in our force, but somebody knows something, I'm sure. But you're looking for information. What do you want? Well, seeing as uh, you guys are the big game hunters, I'm sure you've been up in the mountains up north. Nah, you yeah. You notice anything weird? Uh, define what part of the week, my friend. There's always something weird going up on up that mountain. <coughs> Cold. Cultist with the uh, nice little hawk talon symbol, whichever mm. it is. Mm. People in robes, old carts going up there. I might have seen You're a couple of carts, but I don't know about any cultists. But then again, they were bundled up, so if they were wearing anything culty, I wouldn't know. If I was able to grab a map, would you remember uh, at least? what the location might be. Uh, yeah, you, you, you want a map? Hey, uh, Reginald, Reginald, get your ass out here. And this elf behind one of the counters who was like fixing bowstrings on broken bows. What do you want? These people need to know how to get up in the mountains and find something. You got any of the maps? Kind of like glances around. Yeah, yeah, hold on. And he pulls the tube out from the side and unfurls a map of the northern regions of uh, Dragonspine and the mountains just north of it. Uh, what did you want to point out to him, Isaac? And he, like, points to a point on the map about halfway up one of the mountains in particular. Like, you have to go through a few of these places, he starts. But as soon as you get past these first couple mountains, there's, like, a little plateau that kind of flattens out. And then there might be some cave systems around here. Um, you can any kind of like points, like marking the vicinity. But your best bet is just to check that entire region. It's probably a good two or three square mile. And it could be up the hill a little ways, or it could be, you know, back in that valley. But yeah, that's where I've seen them kind of like going through. Like there's a road that goes through on that flat, and I try to hunt there. And Reginald's like, are you trying to give away one of our best hunting spots? What the hell's wrong with you? Ah, these people are looking for something else. They don't want game. They want people. <laughs> they want people. Like, meanwhile, meanwhile, Triard is like eyeing up, uh, uh, like eyeing very closely, like the different trophies in the room. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You see, like, ah, that was a big motherfucker. Mm -hmm, there, there's some yeah. huge ones, especially the Hydra head. Yeah, I look to the elf and start knocking on my helmet, just going, "That's right. You hunt game. We hunt cultists." Sorry, nervous chick. No. <laughs> you hear uh, strings pluck in the background as a dark-skinned elf kind of like comes out and he just kind of like sings a simple ballad, just testing his voice. La, la, la. Oh, we have company. Hello. And Isaac turns. That's Drella. That's a drow elf that joined our group about three or four months ago. Uh, Regald, this elf here, he's uh, a ranger of sorts. He kind of knows the land, the lay of it. Uh, and I'm Isaac. I, uh, make sure things die. <laughs> you see a giant great axe on his back. I can respect that. 
Uh, but you guys are hunting some some game. That's a shame. Like, if you guys were interested in joining the lodge, I don't know if any of you hunt, but, uh, you know, we do a one-week hunting trip in the southern jungles, you know. If you were able to land a wild game, you might even be able to join the lodge. If that ever tickles anybody fancy. <laughs> so, uh, do you just, like, experience. hunt stuff like this all the time? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we sell... Okay, so there's a process, my friend. You, you ever heard of ta taxiderma? Uh, taxiderma is uh, Reginald correct. Yeah, that <laughs> taxiderma. Uh, basically, we hunt some beautiful game. Sometimes some leopards. Sometimes some panthers. Like those sell pretty good if you can find them fresh enough and not. I'm sorry, Reginald, for scraping up the fur on that last one. And he's like, do you know how hard it is to sew an axe wound back together? Especially when you cleave? <laughs> yeah. And it was so fun watching you work. And the elf just kind of like palms his head. It's like, see what I deal with? At any rate, yes, we tend to exotic game. And then there are many collectors in this town that will pay high dollar for artistic work. So we must look for the most exotic. Matter of fact... The guild has been contracted to hunt down a unicorn. Can you believe that? Yeah, are we ever going to find that thing? Yeah, well, we'll keep our eyes I out. call that a challenge. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a challenge. I don't think there's any unicorns in this region. So we might have to pack our things and head to Perinthia and see if we can find it there. But it's going to be a challenging game nonetheless. But, like Isaac said, if you were interested in joining the lodge, we do a one-week adventure in the jungle. We find some panthers or tigers or what have you, and if you manage to bag one of them, you can join the lodge. Otherwise, it's a free week out. Maybe not free. Depends. Hmm. How much Look, if you're doing, like, a whole oh. expedition, I want in! <laughs> Alright, yeah. Alright, and Trittier, let's let... But what was the other person saying? I think that was Frey. Yeah, uh, jungle, huh? Well, yeah. Think there'd be any displacer beasts down there? Ooh, haven't hunted them in a while, have we? And you see Drella the drow kind of like come over. You usually find them deep where I used to be from. There is some cave systems if you're looking for them. Hmm. Well, the hunting expedition sounds like a fun little experience. I'm always mm -hmm. up for something new. Yeah, if you guys find yourself bored one week. Come on by. We'll see if we can spice your life. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, on that note, I look to the ranger. Now, I'm only asking because, well, I don't think any of us have your sort of expertise. Mm -hmm. If under one we go up that way, if you're free, would you be willing to uh, show us the easiest way to get up to where we're needing to go? Uh, of course, mm -hmm. I'd pay you. Need a guy. You wouldn't have to join in any fighting. It would just be more or less you show us the way and then maybe leave a marker for when we come back. That way we know where to go home. Ooh, make a persuasion check and I'll give you advantage. Yeah, no, it wasn't rolls. too bad of a DC though. He's like, yeah, I could do that for a little coin. How much you paying? Mm. Wow. Well, a few miles up. Unknown terrain getting your help mm -hmm. and you'd be letting us know how to get back once we get back mm -hmm. 15 gold sound good yeah um, we do all look like a boss bunch yeah sure isaac i'm not going to go to that uh thing with you He's like, oh come on it'd be fun nope nope it seems i have important things to do now yay and he kind of like pats you on the shoulder and says thank you almost like you need an excuse to get out of something. <laughs> I had him the uh, 15 gold out of my out of my satchel. But I and he asked, when do you want to go? Uh, well, that's going to be more on these guys. All right. So, yeah, you guys have a moment to discuss. If you want, come back after you've discussed it, and we'll, I'll help you out. So you may Sounds all good. leave and discuss this and then head to another destination if you feel the need. Or continue having a conversation here. But, uh, I just Trittier... stay silent and let the team converse if uh, they want to. 
Yeah, Tridier, you said you were all in for him on one of these expeditions. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's like in a in a you know in a PG thirteen stream. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not get too ugly about it. But um, <laughs> let's see. I always wanted to punch a lion. <laughs> and, and, and Isaac goes, that's some brave words, bird. I'm all for that kind of attitude. <laughs> and Rachel just kind of looks on like, hmm. Suppose it could be fun hunting some game around here. Oh, we should ask what game are around. Yeah. Like the unicorn? No, you won't find those in a jungle. <laughs> Not usually. <laughs> and Robot's ears perk up. Unicorn? I want to see a unicorn. And the guys are like, <laughs> where did this little thing come from? I almost didn't recognize her back there. <laughs> you want to see a unicorn? And she's like, uh-huh. And <laughs> you see uh, Regil, like put a hand on Isaac, like, don't don't, you know, like adult motion. And Regil kind of like stops him from talking. He's like, what? What? The girl wants to see a unicorn. What am I going to say? <laughs> Come on. What do you think I'm going to tell her? I'm going to go out there and cut the head off and chop the horn off and use it for a trophy? No, I wasn't going to say that. And he just slaps his head. It's like, you freaking doof. And <laughs> Robon's like, what? Oh, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What do you guys do? He was, hey, go he was talking about the thing that would kill a unicorn. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, hmm? oh, that'd be me. Wait, what? <laughs> it's like, uh, he didn't say unicorn, he said manticore. <laughs> oh, those names are ugly. And the drow is like, you're right about that, child. But, uh, yeah, unless there's any other... Oh, continue with your conversation if there's anything else you want to talk about. So, what time should we go? Uh, yeah, when do you guys yeah. want to head up that hill? It's a mighty climb. Do you think that we should go when it's less... more sun? Or when it's dark? Probably best if we go leave here during the morning. That way, we'll be mid-morning by the time we get to the dangerous parts. And then we can make it back before nightfall. What you think? I say to the other group members. Yeah. Well, also just easier to see where... You, well, it, it's fine for me, but, you know, some of you can't see in the dark, so... I could see in dark if I punch things forward. <laughs> that is very true. And Robon's like, I can't see in the dark. Shuffles around, kicks her foot out. Oh, we'll just need to get to you some, like, glasses. Hmm. Or I punch more. You're probably going to want to get her a jacket. Or a coat, I should say. Maybe something made of fur? We might have something here. And I think a break is Actually, about to come in because I hear my name being called. Oh, <laughs> well, I wonder, wouldn't she already have like? Uh, I guess she wouldn't have brought the the clothes yeah. with her because she li usually lives in the north. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, those clothes are at the house. But uh, what ah, we're, uh maybe we're... we should buy her some protection. Then you guys continue to talk. I'm gonna go check real quick on what's going on. I have my headset on though, so if you need something, I'll respond when I get back. Okay, be RP real quick. Let's go for it. Yeah. There's, yeah. Girl, what you think we do? Um, well, it's up to you guys, to be honest. I'm down for whatever. Yeah, I think it's just better to have more eyes on more places. And you can't really do that if you can't see. Understandable. 
then maybe for now we should get supplies and prepare. Yeah. What do you take for mountains? Pickle never been on mountains. Oh, uh, probably climbing gear, food, supplies, that kind of thing. You don't just jump up? Oh, well, if you can fly or jump real high, that helps too. Pickle well, will jump high. Yeah, essentially you want to grab all the things you talked about, but you don't want to... If you're going up, you don't want to trek the whole way non-stop. You kind of want to take breaks here and there. You know, keep your head from feeling like it's going to fall off or pop open. Why would it like pop that. open? Couldn't tell you. Hope Pickle does not lose her head. No, Pickle, don't lose your head. Mr. Rain said that we might lose our heads if it's later it might go pop oh no i don't think we should go then why why are we um... <clears throat> excuse me i've got this <clears throat> ah but yeah so what do we decide on though we're still so i think we did ultimately decide to like leave in the morning and use this time to prep for that <laughs> sounds good. prep everybody in get ready so... to go if you're looking for, like, general supplies to go up a mountain, like pitons and climbing rope and other gear, uh, let's just make it, like, five gold pieces for, like, an entire kit that'll help you do that. And then it'll include warm clothing as well. Um, Does that sound the... like... We'll call it the winter pack. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it the winter pack. Uh, what were you saying there, Frey? Being an outlander, from my uh, background, would I have to worry about that, or would I have a better chance at being prepared? Uh, do you already have like, uh, a climber's like kit? Knowing the general layout, oh, well, calm down now. I'm bit... running my game here, please. Uh, do you have a climber's kit? I do not, but I will go out of, if if maybe yeah, you... I will go out of my way to get one. Yeah, and as far as heavy furs or something to keep you warm, like, I don't think everybody has resistance to cold. So if you have no resistance to cold, I don't think Outlander protects you from that. Gotcha. Yeah, just... Then I will take the time to go get those, that. Those yeah. would be very popular backgrounds if they could give you resistances. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. I'm trying to get this stuff for... So, yeah, you should have a climber's kit. And then you can add warm clothing. And you can wear it at the top of your gear so it doesn't affect your... Or beneath it or whatever. Like if you're wearing plate, you're wearing it underneath along with the padding. Gotcha. So warm clothing, uh, about one pound. Okay. Right. Would that all be like, what, 25 all together, I'm guessing? Just, just five gold. It's not that much. Okay. And you guys need to remind me that Robot has lucky. <laughs> uh, alright. But has anyway... Well. Welcome. I'm not gonna lie, I misheard. I didn't hear the end part. What you said? On me or Ritz? Yeah, on you, on on you, on um, Starwind. Okay, I just said that the clothing was gonna weigh one pound and uh, five gold for a climber's kit and the clothing, and you can wear it underneath or above, depending upon what kind of gear you wear. So it doesn't affect oh, okay. your AC. Yeah, it doesn't affect your AC. Just make sure you don't freeze to death and make con saves to stay warm. So just to yeah. those con saves. Definitely gonna buy robot gloves then. Oh, and a hat. Yeah, that comes with And you. all the scarves. She uh, paid for hers too, though. She showed you money that she picked up. Yeah, um, I'm gonna um, buy myself some winter clothes and some climbing gear and basically anything I'll need for this trip. Nice. Yeah, like I said, it'd be five gold, and you can get, like, whatever decorative... Like, don't think you can get a hundred scarves and, and all that, but, you know, reasonable clothing to w stay warm. It'll be all five gold with climber's kit, so I think that's just a fair quick assumption there. Uh, yeah, let me see what store you probably went, and I can give you some details about that, so you're not in the dark, like, if you want to find something else. Although I, although I am getting this mental image of Robot just to, like, uh, just fully, like, winter-coated, that, like, mm -hmm. that giant puffy thing. <laughs> like, her arms are in, stuck in a T-pose. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. Ah! I keep barely moving this. Are you sure I need this many scars? <laughs> Small pickle, okay. Uh, Little pickle, adorable. <laughs> but now I look like a pickle. This ain't fair. Why'd you pick green? <laughs> oh, yeah, but so adorable. So cute. Uh, also, let's see here. Wow, I don't have an actual general shop. Oh, uh, that's leather goods. That's the stable. Oh, there's a bone crafter here. Alright, so... As you all leave this generic item shop, if you need anything else, feel free to ask. But, uh, I do want to point out that there's like an alchemy shop right across the street. It's called Peyote Ugly Alchemy Shop. Just kind of like catches your eye for a moment. Can we stop there? Peyote ugly. <laughs> yep, you can definitely stop sure. there. You didn't know how hard it was to hold back that laughter. Oh, I was waiting for it. So you walk towards the shop and inside you see a black scale dragonborn. Just kind of like pipe up. Hello, hello, come in, come in. And she sees the group of you all come in. Ah, customers. What may Safra get for you? Do you have ingredients for healing and also for protection against water? <laughs> protection against water, you say? Hmm. I, I have, have potions that are pre-made if you need any healing pots. Some greater healing pots, some superior healing pots. Uh, I have a concoction here that may do something more to protect you from water. And she pulls out this rainbow vial uh, concoction that's in no idea what it, what it came from or what it's, you know, was made from. But uh, she waves it in front of you. It's like, tell you what, if you're daring, I'll give you the first one for free. How much? If you want any additional concoctions, it's a hundred gold. But the first one's on the house. Give it a try before you buy, if you would. I would hate to sell you a bad lemon. I look at Trudier. Should I try rainbow thing? I mean, if you won't, I will. How about we share? <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> So, I'll just ask the question. Do you both take half the drink and drink it? Oh yeah, definitely. Make me a DC Let's con split. save, please. <laughs> Constitution saving throw for the two of you. And you can choose to fail if you like. Alright, Tradier doesn't get the choice, but Pickle Pete, do you want it to fail? Yeah, let's make it fail. Alright, 1d6 for the both of you. Not like I introduce you to the shop without reason. <laughs> Alright, Trittier. Ow! Ow! Okay. I'll start with Pickle Pete. This one's a lot easier to do. So, Pickle Pete, all of a sudden, you know how it feels when you just suddenly drink, like, maybe seven shots back to back? and non-stop, and then all of a sudden it all hits you at once. For the I next... wouldn't know if it's Pickle Pete's a lightweight. Yeah, so for the next hour, this is your loopy and drunk. You're very drowsy, but you can't sleep either. So you're in that state where, oh, I'd like to go to sleep, but your leery drunkenness kind of keeps you from doing it. As for our friend, Trittier, we see him fall over and go numb, and he is paralyzed for one hour. So, so, he, the... yeah, so he starts, what is it? it? They call it planking, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, when you just, yeah. It's like, shoo! Poof, right on his face. <laughs> oh, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna grab the, the, the cup from my feathered friend before it drops and just go, huh. Mm -hmm. Rambo drink. Takes your wings. Put it back on the counter. Um, you have any holy I water? I guess I'll. Holy water? <laughs> oh, yes, I... 
There are many blessed waters here, and that is just one of them. <laughs> Looks at the different results they give. Ah, holy water. 50 gold each, I believe that is. Uh, hmm. I think so. You can correct me on that if I'm wrong. This is just me going off my m memory. Let's see. Go check. One thing Roll20 is not good at is giving us, like, the base value of certain items. Okay, so it says 25, but let me check the, the actual, uh, compendium. 25 might be right. Like, I knew it was, like, a factor of 20 of some sort. Let's see, uh... Yeah, remember. it says, uh, t 25 on the D&D Beyond site. Alright, 25 sounds good. Sweet. I will pay that up. Yep, yeah, sure enough. Verified from player's handbook as well. Alright, cool. So, yeah, you have a vial of holy water. And there are healing potions here if you guys are interested. I will take two, as I say in a drunken tone. Yeah, yeah. So she tries to hand you two of them and you keep moving your wings to where she can't give them to you. It's like... That'll be a hundred gold, dear. Come on now. Oh, oh, you almost got it that time. Oh, here you go. <laughs> Pip get... likes this game. Uh, it does help me with my workout as well, dear. And uh, eventually she gets the hundred gold from you and two vials reach your pocket. Anything else for anyone else? Anybody else want to buy any healing potions, or are you all good? No, shake my head. Alright. How has Yurk's body been? I don't know, Yurk's not here today, is he? Yeah, well, last time I left off, I was just safeguarding his unconscious... He eventually, at this point, used his crystal to go back home. Alright. And, uh, it's, uh... Is it the goblin friend that's uh, on the ground, passed out? Yeah, yeah. He's, and he's, I, and he's just like cannot move. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick him up like a like a suitcase. Yeah, <laughs> lifts you by the. Back oh of no! Your... <laughs> yeah, lifts you by the back of your leathers, and now you're like in a suitcase form. <laughs> Robot's like, oh dear, he's. Are you okay? And she like waves her hand in front of your eyes. You're able to blink and that's about it. Oh, I think he'll be fine. <laughs> we just he just needs to walk it off. <laughs> yeah. And he says about the thing that can't walk. <laughs> yeah. And then Pickle like bumps into you or something at this point. As as we're walking to do whatever we're doing next, I'm just gonna occasionally out of a fit of boredom just start lifting him up and down interchanging into different arms just so, using him as like a a weight like, yeah doing weight <laughs> oh that looks fun mm -hmm. kind of a little bit I you know, know when you mentioned that i was just imagining you know how those people with signs just are doing cool tricks with them i was spinning the sign yeah yeah Ah, that... <laughs> I got a tune in performance, but I don't want to drop anybody. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, at this point here, you could probably all check into an inn, stay the night, or if you really wanted to, you could probably return back to, the, you know, where you live, and then just have Felix bring you back here the next day. So, however you want to spend the day or night. I would talk to Robant, and I would ask her, well, I would try to ask her, since I'm a drunken Lao now, oh, this is gonna be what it is. Yeah. that, let me try to figure out, Robant, do you want home? Hug? I mean, I can give you a hug. She hugs you. <laughs> Tries to steady you. Oh, uh, no. No, no. Oh! No? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hug you then. Little 
pickle. Yeah? As I try to give her a hug, I just, like, trip on the floor. Oh, no. Oh, no, but she, like, looks desperately towards your face and tries to lift you up. No, no, don't. Laura's not healthy for you. Not healthy for anybody. Not like that. And then she looks back to Trudy, especially like that. Flora is my friend now. Oh dear. Um, should we go find a place to stay for the night, or are we going back home? You, uh, need help picking that one up too? Yeah, I'm afraid so. She needs... Pickle, you want help? I want to fly! I can't help you there. <laughs> um, I have a 16th strength. Would I be able to carry both of them? Probably. And one on each, or would you? Yeah, I think, okay. I think, yeah, they're both kind of like... They're not huge, so... Gotcha. Arm. Uh, one, one's a, one's not even squirming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dead weight in one arm, and the other one's just perfectly stiff as a board. Gotcha. So I just lift a uh, feathered friend off the ground. It's like, well, there you go, buddy. Just put your arms out and pretend you're flying. Okay, where the hell do we go? <laughs> and robots got you. Oh, it's got so talent. blue up here. Yeah, robots carrying you by your feet, just like, okay, got you. <laughs> This must look so interesting to the town. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's kind of like staring like, what? Bunch of drunkards and they're traveling with a the kid? What's going on with that? Caca! <laughs> no, I mean, seriously. what? They've never seen like a group of like grown adults in a children before? Mm. So it all look like ants down look. here. So the question is, do we go back to the inn, or do we want to go back to home home? And I know Pickle tried to talk the robot about it, but apparently that didn't go anywhere. Oh, it's, it's, it's up to you guys. Wherever they need to go, I gotta drop them off, apparently. And yeah, I guess robot will be the voice of reason. Should we just teleport back home to Felix? Alright. Yeah. Go. Go. Oh, the right. mighty uh, old pickle. Yeah. And with that, you all, and eventually Grits, if you want to rejoin this group as well, you are all back at at our uh, homestead. Let me go ahead and delete the people that I know that are not here today. Uh, Yahoo! And if you're not on the map, go ahead and bring your character over. Uh, if I home sweet it, home. And if Hold I on, I'm wrestling with my cat. Yes, wrestle away. Uh, if you're not on the map, drag your character over. If I delete it, you just drag your character over. And, uh, yeah. As you all return back home, you see right. the, you see the familiar sight of Billy outside roasting a dire wolf. And then Felix at his favorite chair smoking his hookah, noticing you all coming back from your adventure in Dragon Spy. Welcome home, everybody. Hope you've had a good visit. Yeah, it was pretty... It's pretty alright. Pickles flying! Yurk passed the fuck out. He must be back by now. Uh, I place <laughs> them each down on, like, a surface where it's not, like, hard. It's just comfortable. Yeah, you can... Oh, hello, out. friend. My friend ground. There you go. And turn. Yeah, Robot's like, oh, I'm tired. I guess I'll turn in. And she kind of like rushes upstairs, and Felix just kind of like looks over to Trittier and Pickles, like, what, what nonsense did you two get into? What happened to Rainbow them? Potion? Rainbow Potion takes away your wings, or in their case, paralyzes him and. uh Make some drunk. Did you go oh. to Peyote Ugly? Oh yeah, that's the name of that place. Yes, yes. Uh, don't get me wrong, the old crone there knows her medicine, but she likes to make these drinks that are very randomish in nature, depending upon random elements. I don't even know what vectors or whatever she's doing, but 
just any of these random moments when you drink it, it picks a certain thing to happen to you and you're out just like that. Or you're that points over to Pickle Pete. I don't what? Uh, it should wear off in about an hour. Oh, my name is wear off? Yes. Hello, ground. My name is wear off. And <laughs> just out of shits and giggles, Felix uses thaumaturgy and goes, Hello, wear off. How are you? And yeah, he I lost myself out. there. <laughs> and he chuckles a bit. And he turns back to whoever was paying him the most attention about the potions. He's like, but then again, the old crone knows how to have some fun, so. Alright. If uh, you're needing anything to eat, the kitchen's yours. Otherwise, I will be calling it a night as well. Fare thee well. Farewell, Felix. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the evening is currently yours. Okay, if I feel physically is... nearby. One second. Oh. But or right. um, yeah, pickle P. If you're gonna be still sitting there, then Grits is just gonna be pitting the fluffy. Did you say pity or the? Are you like hitting me pitting. with something? No, no. pitting. I know. Pat pat. Oh, okay. Cute, soft, fluffy burp. Burp happy. My name is. What's that? Oh wait, that's not my name. What was my name, Ground? It was Wera. I believe your name was Pickles. Sorry about that, guys. I'm back. I, I kind of just shake my head and sigh, and I just go to lay down underneath the table. Yep, it's been a busy day for most of you. Uh... Is there anything, like, an hour does eventually pass, and then all of a sudden, Trudy, you're, you're back to your normal self. Pickle, you snap out of this daze that you went into. Wah! Wah! Uh, Where's Pickle? Where's Pickle? It's like, what Where? exactly did they do with Tryhard's body? <laughs> they set you down on the ground, and that's it, I think, right? Yeah, I, I, that's all I did. I just, I set them both down either on the couch or the ground, because I just can carry them all day yeah. you know, half of the day i would say they put you back in your common spot right there by the fireplace <laughs> <laughs> oh green I can move, move. <laughs> was it fun being frozen it was a nightmare <laughs> Pickles. nightmare 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 Pickle doesn't remember what Pickle did. That's fair. Pickle hungry, though. Um, uh, I would say uh. the hour is getting close to 10 in the evening as you guys kind of like settle in. Uh, is there anything else you want to do before we move on? Well, right. oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was like, uh, was Billy, uh, was Billy spinning something over the fire? Oh yeah, he's got, he got a dire wolf all ready, if you want to join him for a meal outside. Who the heck was this? Uh, you can just join in eating some wolf. Yeah, try, yeah, Triard goes, Triard goes out there and, uh, it's like, hey, can I have a bit of that? Oh, hey, it's you, little green. Sure, tears off a piece for you. Here you go. Be careful, some of it might still be... Oh, it should be fine for you, though. <laughs> yeah, the last Dire Wolves I killed, I didn't get at any piece of it, so... What? <laughs> That's not fair. I'll make sure you I get know, a... right? I'll make sure you get a whole one next time. Yeah, and it just, like, just, like, tears into it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the two of you are enjoying Dire Wolf meat cooked over a spit. Anybody else doing I, anything? Go ahead. Uh, I guess I could cook something up in the kitchen. Alright. Yeah, I'm just looking for things to keep you guys busy until a little bit later. So, yeah, yeah. you're busy cooking. Krom is cooking. Krom is... Yeah. 
What is Chrome the Destroyer cooking? Um, I think I'm cooking some beef stew. Sounds good. Oh, you like. Pickle can't have meat because pickle can't fit it down mouth. Uh, mm, um, will you like some pickles? Pickles love pickles. Um, yeah. So I guess I would. Um, I'll find a jar of pickles and open the jar and hand it to pickles. And then you just see me just jam my beak into this jar. <laughs> <laughs> So that's going on. Um, yeah. But I know after I basically get myself covered in all the pickles and having a pickle party, I'm going to go find Robon and okay, so just go check on this, this, you know, hunching over black feathered bird person is covering themselves in actual pickles. Mm -hmm. I never said I was a good, good um, a uh, nice cl eat. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh my! I used to in real yeah, life as well. Probably. probably. No, I just had a really busy day. Uh, I got like two or three hours of sleep. So I was just saying I don't have good table manners. Yeah, there you go. And Robot apparently went to bed. So if you want to go so find her in her bedroom, you can definitely do that. Pickle will do that. Okay. Tap on her door. Who is it? Pickle! Oh, Pickle, come in! She opens the door. I was just about to go to bed. Do you want Pickle to hang out with you both so you can sleep? Sure, if you want. And she, like, goes over to a pillow and, like, hides a knife under it. Just like I was taught. <laughs> you forgot one thing. What's that? What's but that? Puts another knife under there. Well, you know, more the merrier, of course. And, and, yeah, let's see here, so, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, like, what would you like to do, robot, before you sleep? She whispers in your ear, what about the snowman? I like snowman. Does he talk back? Um, I mean, not normally. I mean, Felix might be able to make it talk. Uh, I just haven't been able to make a snowman since we got here. Pickle will help. Follow me. <laughs> okay, so she changes into some warmer clothes, especially getting a chance to try out the new weather gear that you got her. So she gets dressed up in her big old poofy coat. And pelt coat and just runs outside and oops accidentally dropped her right on top of you and you see and pickle rush out with the uh, robot uh the rest of you who are downstairs you are welcome to either join that scene or hang out downstairs it's perfectly fine but yeah robot and pickle head outside and i guess start making a snowman ray is sleeping under the table currently all right Let's yeah. make a giant. Let's make a snowman about the weird new man. Okay. Uh, where do you guys uh, want to build the snowman? I want to build a snowman by um Billy so that he has company. Oh, okay. So we'll go over here, maybe. Yeah. So robot will come like over here and start rolling up snow and try to roll it over towards him. Billy's like, "What are you doing?" Me helping making a big you. <laughs> I'm the only big me around. Well, still, snow friend, snow friend. Yeah, and you're out here in the late, late hours, but the moon is full and offering plenty of light for you to actually be able to see around. Also, the fire that is also spilling, billowing smoke into the air is creating enough light in the vicinity as well. And you and Robot continue to make this snowman while one of our players, Frey, is like sleeping underneath the table. Chrome is busy making a meal and Grits is just ridding the day and just bearing down on whatever's going on in his mind right now as he is relaxing. Yeah, in the there's room. also just, there's also just that new. As um, 
night. Basically just filling around and making sure he's well camped. As the hours grow late, we start to hear a cackling of laughs in the air. The mist outside starts to billow in. And then we hear what sounds like children laughing once more. Robot looks to Pickle for a moment as she's like, what was that? Should I roll a perception? You may. And all of you inside hear the children laughing as well. You see this misty field kind of like brush in like a quick breeze and then suddenly you're brought into a bluer teal version of the area. You feel like you're starting to snap into the ethereal bleed again. However, there's no malice in the air like you would normally feel. You see what looks like spiritual lights that are dancing in the air like will o wisp perhaps. Uh, there are several that are like dancing around the cottage at the moment. I uh, push the chair back that's next to my head and place my arms like I'm doing like a backward uh, stroke swimming to pull myself out of the table to stand up. Alright. And I just get my longsword at the ready and go outside. Yeah. So yeah, you hear this children laughter. And then as you step out, you realize the feel of the area, the visions that you see now kind of strike a chord of the ethereal bleed that has once dropped you off into this area. But now... There's this sense of children just laughing, just spectral images, uh, lights, just light sources. Nothing that seems to say malice like some of your recent incursions with the uh, ethereal bleed. Like before, there were zombies that were coming after you. There were skeletons coming after you. But now these will-o'-wisps are like floating in the air. And they seem to be floating around each other and just... You just continue to hear the cacophony of children laughing in the air. And yeah, they kind of like float around each other. Hi. This is fucking weird! <laughs> I would tell Robot yeah. to stay back. Yeah, what would you tell Robot? Pickle? Pickle? I would tell her to stay put by Green Pickle, and then I would just slowly approach the Wisp, um, the Willy the Wisp. Right. Did I just say Willy of the Wisp? Oh my Willy god. The, that's one of their names. How'd you know? No. <laughs> uh, okay, so the guys outside have a good idea what they want to do. What about the guys inside? Are you going to stay put? Or are you going to look through a window? What do you want to do? You know there's something going on. You just saw uh, Frey walk out the door and get ready to fight. You hear the clinging of metal coming out as he unsheaths his sword. I guess Chrome will hear something going on outside and comes out the door and say like, Oi, what's going on out there? Uh, there's children laughing, Billy tells you as he points to the spectral lights that both Frey and Pickwork looks to at this point. Ritz, what are you doing? Yeah, he's just wandering out. Very annoyed that Again, there's, again, there's the spooky ghost shit going on. Quick, who has the best performance to do jump rope? <laughs> yeah, because the thing is, you don't feel malice like you normally did whenever you keep entering these fields. For once, it's very peaceful. And yeah, it's just children laughing. I sheath my sword. And Roll20 does not want me to play any music for you guys. I'm sorry. I'll try these. But, uh, yeah. They continue to laugh. And then... I think for a moment we see... A figure do appear, but... Kind of, like, further out. Like, you can't quite make her out just yet. Because, one, I gotta look up her token. And two, uh, you're still a little ways from her. There she is. One of these spirits that are like further back kind of simulates a porcelain human girl who slowly walks towards you and raises her hands and just quietly 
you know, says, I come in peace in some mannerism that she's trying to show you. And the spirits continue to just dance around her. But she says nothing. No, you don't seem like a typical undead. What's your business here, kid? She has no reply for you. She just motions. And the spirits continue to laugh and giggle. Play with us. Yes, play with us. <laughs> well, Pickle would do the most obvious thing and ask the children, what would you like to play? Um, I'm going to turn around and cast protection from good and, uh, from evil and good on the uh, little girl. Oh, very good. All right. Yeah, that's still that. living. Yeah, that's oh, still living. <laughs> okay. I would like to answer the... I would like to ask her what's her name because I didn't catch her name from last time. How do how do you know our um our blue dragonborn friend? She looks at you, but she's unable to speak. Like she has no voice. It seems uh, she uh, pulls a bow from a violin that she has on her hip, and she draws in the s snow. And you see her draw out the name Lindsay, and then she points at herself. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Lindsay. I'm Chrome, and these are my friends, but I'm sure you met some of them before. She does a little polite curtsy, like if she was like a performing uh, musician, and she slides her violin out peacefully. And um, you know, I've, I've returned the same curtsy back. Pickle says thank you for helping me last time. She smiles. And nods. And I'm going to see if I can find one of her songs that I use. Might be copyrighted, but I kind of like this song, so. Let's see. So she starts to play a melody. And if World 20 plays it, there you go. And the spirits just kind of like dance around her, happily listening to the song. And she just smiles vacantly at you. You're all able to interact however you want at this point, but she just seems to be here to perform. Pickle will sit down and enjoy the show. Mm -hmm. I missed it by the bird. I'll just stand where I am with hands on my hips, paying great attention to uh, what's going on. Each and every one of you feel a childlike spirit grab your hand. Ah, what the fuck? <laughs> She's exactly right. Yeah, Gritz just, Gritz just reflexively raises his hand, not in a threatening manner, but just literally just raising it upward as he feels something grip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. For a moment, as you all turn, you maybe see a reflection of a small boy or a small girl. Maybe it's someone from your you past. You cut off. I said, maybe it's somebody from your past that you're looking at. A child that you may have known at one point. A boy or a girl lost in the ghost world now. Uh, if you want to make history checks to see if this might be a history that comes back to you from your memories, you may trigger that. Since we have only like a few people. If we had a busy house, we would be in a fight scene. But you get the dignity today. Rolling absolute garbage. It's fine, it's fine. You know, I rolled pretty well for my character. Well, pretty good for my negative one. Uh, Pickle, didn't we say you had family, right? Yes, eight, um, eight siblings. Um, your youngest sibling. I wouldn't know it, but if you can come up with it. You see their beaky face right before you. And they almost look like they have tears in their eyes. Whatever this sibling was in your youth, your youngest one. Either this Here spirit is... Spirit. Yeah, either this spirit is playing a prank on you, or this is them. And something bad happened. Chrome. Oh, oh go, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry, Pickle. I'll give you a moment to have your spotlight, and then I'll move. Spotlight. 
Oh no, I was just gonna say, I reach my hand out and just like, um, try to comfort it. It smiles, looks up at you with new glow of hope. Uh, now, Chrome, what about you? Now, this is a part where we can like look at your actual backstory together and be like, do you have siblings? Or maybe you had a child, or, you know, or maybe you knew of a young person who was not doing very well. This is your option to kind of like figure that out real quick. Do you have anything in mind? Oh. Wait, me? You rolled a 20, did you not? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I did. I mean, do you want me to come back to you and you think on that or what? Uh, yeah, I could think on that. No, right, you think on that. Meanwhile, Frey, pretty much the same thing. This is a history check to unlock a memory from your backstory that you were told to leave blank. So basically, we're going to ask you, would you have remembered a sibling that you once had or maybe a young friend or some child from your past that may or may not be alive right now? Um, would a 16 allow that? Yeah. yeah, like okay. Pete pick, um, pick had an advantage in a way, but yeah, it would allow it for you. Uh, 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 I guess I had like a childhood friend. All right, hold on, Chrome. I'll come back to you. Bray, go for it. Um, yeah, no, it, it would probably be a childhood friend. Because uh, originally, like I said, this character is from a campaign where the ending was kind of unsure. Right. So it works out that he would come out of this misty death type of a space and noticing the visage of the I'm gonna say do you Tom. know a name or no I don't know I don't think he would know a name but toss right. a coin it's a uh, girl it's a girl uh, all right uh, yeah. human or what I'll roll, uh, I'll I, roll would, I would say human or half elf uh, originally his character from Carter so more of like the all Asian right, let me yeah let me look up some the, human names then and uh, I'll give you a random on this one. All right. Uh, I know half elves don't have their own. We'll go with an elf name, maybe. Let's see. Roll me a D100. Right. And I'll see if roll 20 is going to let me actually see any of these tables. Uh, if that don't work, we'll go with these here. All right, what do we get? 66. 66. Her name was Jane. You see Jane before you right now, and she smiles like, like you probably remember one day when you were running around in the nearby yard playing tag together, and the feeling of just catching up to her and tagging her, and she looks back at you and like, it's not fair, but you know she's just smiling and laughing, and you as well. Those memories kind of like come out of nowhere and fill you. All right, Rob, let's come back to you. A childhood friend. Would you know her name or his name? Um. Yeah, I guess her. Mm, I guess her name will be Diane. Diane. That's a nice name. So there before you, in a childlike form, you see Diane. Pretty similar in story. You were playing together and having fun. Maybe you were making a sand castle at a nearby beach or building mud castles if that was your thing. I mean, it just, whatever childhood memory comes to you, it just pulls in. And Lindsay continues playing her little violin piece, just offering you all like a peaceful march. And I'm going to give everybody who failed one more chance because Lindsay's offering you advantage. Hmm. Alright. Your neighborhood must have sucked, Trittier. <laughs> no, no, I, no, like, I, well, what, I rolled what, I'm, what I'm thinking is, is that, you know, goblins just go through the meat grinder with, like, so much. It's just like, like, it's literally just another face. It's like... <laughs> yeah, and that's probably what it is. This, There's just a random goblin girl that's looking up at you that just did not survive. You don't know her name. You don't know who she is, but... You know the face. It was seen once or twice in your past, but nothing else comes to mind. But you do get a little 
revisit to your past in a way, but it's not enough to clarify anything. It probably gives you more questions than answers, honestly. Uh, Fritz, if this spirit was somebody you knew, childlike, who would it be? Like, what would they be to you? Well, it'd probably be a younger brother. A younger brother? Uh, Maybe? Some, would you, yeah, yeah would, some, someone aspiring to be tough and athletic just like Grit. But perhaps your younger brother was ailed with ailment, you know, like an illness that he couldn't get over, but he wanted to be strong, and that was his desire because he was so frail. Yeah, and that, and that in turn leading him into lots more ambitious stuff, lots of much more ambitious stuff than normal, just mm -hmm. to get, you know, material or fun. But eventually, to... it was just too late for him. He didn't make it. What's his name? I name? didn't play this far no, here. We, I can help you. I have this fabulous roll table. What race do you want me to roll for? Goliath. Goliath. Alright, roll me a D100 and I'll see if I can find the Goliath names real quick. Are they not on here? I don't guess they're on here. Um, they will... 84. Let's go with... Norse a Goliath names. Halfling Hab Hybrid. I'll go with Norse names. I think that would be Goliath-like, right? Uh, what would yeah. 84. 84. Interesting name. Uh, we can reroll this if you don't like it, but... Snorri! Karakal! Oh, yeah. Karakal. <laughs> Snorri is what I got. If you want to go with Carl, we can go with that instead. Yeah, they just, all those ailments just have them constantly needing to rip. Mm -hmm. You know, the family probably, well, it's hard to accept a child who is frail as a Goliath. Yeah. Because you were such a strong maybe, race. Maybe, maybe just Nori. Yeah, we'll take the S off and call him Nori. So Nori. Yeah. That's fine. So yeah. yeah. His, so you see a childlike version of Nori, which kind of like... Looks almost like you in a way in a younger version because you know you kind of like all represent the same fallback, uh, bald and all that. But uh, yeah, you see what looks like your brother, and all of you for the most part. Like, was there anybody that I haven't said saw anything or anything? I think everybody did, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Lindsay seems to have come here with a gift, and she brought these spirits with her, and then. There is one spirit that wanders over to Robot, and she starts crying. I gotta look at my notes because I had something prepared, so let me make sure I got this right. But all of a sudden you see her with tears in her eyes and she starts reaching out for this ghost figure. And she oh, cries. I know. Oh, go ahead. I was saying that I would immediately go over to Robon. Hopefully the spirit I have would follow. Mm -hmm. She cries out the name Paul, Paulus, brother? No. And this figure, this boy, just smiles at her, kind of like almost laughing at her. And she kind of like looks at it like, you're so mean. And then he stops laughing at her. And then he looks like he goes in to give her a hug. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to do? We see Pickle wander Pickle. over. Oh, I was just gonna say, Pickle pats Robant on the back. Then I look up to the spirit, which I don't even know if I could see the little blood. But then I would be like, Pickle will keep Robant safe. Pickle likes Robant. And Grits is just gonna nail down and just look into that ghostly visage and just go, You. I know you. The spirit says nothing, however, it just smiles in recognition. Meemaw Tyrant's observing his. <laughs> yeah, what is this thing? What is this green speck I'm looking at? <laughs> I don't it's know. Like, this would. This one still has their arms and legs, so... 
Wait, is that one wearing Theo's tail? I'm sorry? No, I was just saying, like, I imagine, I don't know, young goblins, I imagine they run around barefoot. Oh. Well, no, it's just like, you know, sometimes we just die in the most, like, awful of ways. <laughs> like, some of us get limbs torn off, some of us, uh, so, some of us even lose our head. Yeah, the, the goblin. It's, it's very graphic. Shakes, yeah, she sha it shakes its head and nods, and you kind of, like, see her head or his head lull off. And then it, like, picks it up and puts it back on. Ah, you see there, that makes sense. <laughs> and it nods, and then it falls off again and picks it up, puts it back on. Wait, does that mean your head comes off too? <laughs> I, I'm still Eventually. alive. Eventually. Because oh, I'm strong, and the strong survive. <laughs> that's old understands. Uh, I need to roll a history check for Billy. He's there too. <laughs> You're funny, Billy. Let's see. Uh, I don't recognize oh! you. If you were to look towards Billy's direction of eyesight, you would see him looking at a girl in a blue bonnet, small, frail looking thing, has blonde locks coming out from the bonnet, and there's no sense of recognition. But the little girl, like, puts her hand on his meaty paws. As if just to say thank you or something. And he's like, Oi, I can't feel that. Who are you? And all this time, Lindsay's been spiraling through the snow. Spinning around, playing this violin tune. Escorting these spirit children to you. And just giving you the gift of an unlocked memory if you've never had one yet. So with that... The night kind of starts to continue. Her melody starts to soften. And one by one, the spirits wave and they disappear before you. And right as the last one disappears and tries to pick up its head for the last time and it puts it back on and the girl with the goldy locks fades from existence, all eyes turn towards Lindsay. Who is this girl, other than a name that you have picked up? She starts to vanish as well. Like, well, she's not a mean girl. Goodbye, Lindsay. Hope to see you again. I wave back to her. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wave. And with that, the air that was bluish and tint whisked away. And you are now, once again, back where you were from. I'm gonna go, go back and check on the stew. Yeah, that's probably yeah. done by now. And we don't need that we anymore. Or it's ruined. What's up? Oh no, I said or it's ruined. Mmm. Robot just kind of like walks away from that. It's so spaced out. It's like, does that mean? And she kind of like looks to answers between Trittier and uh, Pickle. Does that mean he's not here anymore? Pickle answers honestly. Pickle does not know. Pickle does not know it. But Pickle thinks that it was a good thing. She nods. Do you say anything to her, Tridier? Even Grits, you, you kind of like see her, her ask this question, but go ahead, uh, Tridier. Yeah. You know, sometimes ghosts just play tricks. Yeah, that's a pretty mean trick. Well, I think they maybe just wanted to give you something good to see, even if just for a little bit. Make a persuasion check. It's kind of like putting on a costume. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. We'll see how this goes. Because this will determine where her mind space is after this conversation from you. Nay, you know, this here was like an easy check to make, so you needed an 8, you're pretty good. But this is like the bare minimum, like she can accept what she said, and I, I guess that's fair. And she'll slowly like walk away, and I'll, I'll see you in the morning. We're gonna go help these people out, right, and stop the cultists? 
That's still the plan. Ah. <laughs> and unless you guys have any last minute shenanigans, uh, we're going to make it an early night tonight. Yeah, Grits just walks back in and, well, bows to his mm -hmm. accommodation. Actually, while Billy is still there, Child is just, like, realizing he's, for some reason, never asked this before. It's like, hey, Billy! Mm, yeah? What's the biggest thing you ever killed? Hmm, that's a good question. I, I, I don't remember. I'll give him a history check to see if he can unlock a memory about his biggest kill. Direwolves, I guess. I can't remember anything beyond this. Yeah, but that's a, I've at minimum killed a dire wolf. Mm. Did I kill anything bigger? <laughs> hmm. I mean, it's not a competition, but if it is, well, I guess I better get to work tomorrow, huh? Pixel thinks that you two should have competition. Okay. I go hunt tomorrow then. I'll see what I can find in the mountains tomorrow. <laughs> okay. We'll compare later. Alright, so the two of you are going to have a mountain quarry, or you're going to hunt and see who hunts the biggest game. Uh, Robot returns to her room, and mostly everybody either returns to meal or returns to room. Next week, we're going to pick up with the mountain encounter and see if we can't figure out if there's any cultists up in the hills. So, I hope you're all satisfied with the little bit of time I'm offering this Friday, because here in about 30 minutes, I'm going to go back to Final Fantasy VII. So, if you want to stay tuned and earn those cookie clusters, I'd be happy to have you along. Not only watch me play a game, but you could chat at me. We could talk about, like, things that are happening in this story or another story you're a part of. I'll try not to give you any spoilers, but, you know, if you learn anything from me, make sure you keep it above yeah, table. Yeah. And uh, yeah, join us next week at 4 p.m. Central on Fridays, and we will come back to this. Join us Monday, 7 p.m. Central for our Elsperia campaign. So this is a um, this day this week has only lasted a couple of. Yeah, this was going to be a what? short session because I got other plans because a new game just came out and I want to play it. So this is me being oh, selfish, all right. but I still. <laughs> I still wanted to have a session, nonetheless, but this wasn't going to be a long one. Yeah, well, it does come with its benefit. My mm -hmm. character finally actually rolled something just good enough to actually enough. get their history off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's what, like, I didn't have a lot of plans for a combat, and I but yeah, combat I'm, isn't everything. But yeah, uh, and I had yeah, a plan well, I'm to do a story element today. So yeah, this was yeah, a I'm story. Already, I'm yeah. already incredibly, incredibly attached to Nori. Yeah. So I appreciate you guys coming in tonight. Like I said, stay tuned. I'm going to come back and we're going to do uh, Final Fantasy VII so you guys can continue to earn cookie clusters. I plan on streaming this all weekend so you should be able to see my happy face. Please come by and say hi. I get lonely. Uh, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Central. Like I'm trying to get my outro here. We're going to do Curse of Strahd again. If you join us last Wednesday, that was pretty intense. I like the way it was coming together. Also, so also I noticed that the announcement for the stream going live was like an hour earlier. So, I think because of daylight savings time, because everything keeps on saying that New Zealand is now GMT plus 12. So, everything has gone backward an hour, which means yeah, I would need to set you. my alarm. Oh, I it see. It really does. Oh my god, yeah, because you're in the southern hemisphere, and it, it, they, they go back an hour early, so that's interesting, yeah. But yeah, yeah, we're we're still doing it at our time, and you guys must have went back. So yeah, join us in a half hour. I'll come back with Final Fantasy VII. So yeah, that must have been why you were in the middle of it. Oh, yeah. Alright, great, so let me finish my outro so I can go do errands real quick. Alright, I'm going to just mute you for a moment. No offense, just got to finish what I'm doing here. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to get through. Uh, yeah, so join us next Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central, Curse of Strahd. Like I said, I was enjoying that. We came along, we got a lot done. And that was our session zero. We're already halfway through Barovia Village, and hopefully we'll get past that. Next week, Thursday, is my last adventure in Harlhelm. So come watch Leon as he goes through his final dream sequence and see if he comes out alive, because, oh god, I think I've effed up. 
And then, once again, Friday, 4 p.m. Central. So check your calendars, check your Google, figure everything out. But join us again for some more of this. And like I said, half hour, we're going to come back with the Final Fantasy VII Remake. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for coming out. And do you hear... Oh, why don't... I'll unmute Grits so that he can say goodnight to Twitch and Facebook. Give me one quick second here and I'll do that right hey. now. There you go. There you go. No, I had to do that. I had to finish what I was doing. <laughs> so, yeah, everybody say goodnight to Twitch and Facebook. Ciao, bye. Goodnight. Good night. Have fun. Yeah. Yep. Right. Have a great weekend. And with my cat go meow meow. Enjoy that remake. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And with that, do you hear the calling? Yeah. The chaotic calling, and I'll be back in a half hour, guys. See you soon. Take care. Goodbye. Did you hear my cat?